we started talking, kind of, I mean, I just gave you a very vague idea about it last time, talking about the partial fractions trick, which is a trick for doing integrals. And the example that I did last time was this, integral of 1 over x squared minus 3x plus 4 dx. And I told you sort of out of nowhere, what this trick does is it rewrites the inside like this. A negative one-fifth here, x plus one. So what I just wrote there is called the partial fractions decomposition. You start with a rational function, that is a fraction with polynomials on the top and on the bottom. And you somehow split it up into fractions with just uh, linear things on the bottom. That is, I mean, there's still polynomials on the bottom, but they don't have any exponents beyond power of 1. All right? This is called the partial fractions decomposition. Now, what we need to talk about today is how do you figure out what those one-fifths are, the one-fifth and the minus one-fifth? The denominators are just the factors of the original polynomial. But how do you find those numerators? Uh, if you don't believe me, you could verify that this is correct by um, making a common denominator and adding the stuff together. But the, question, the real question is, how would you determine those numbers if you didn't already have them given to you? But anyway, before um, we answer that, um, once you have done the partial fractions decomposition, now the integral becomes easy to do. This is just 1 fifth ln absolute value x minus 4 plus... Uh, actually, minus one-fifth ln absolute value x plus one plus c. This is because I'm using this, uh, this rule about the integral of one over ax plus b is natural log absolute value ax plus b. Oh, uh, sorry, one over a natural log absolute value ax plus b. The, the a in, in uh, these, I, I use that rule twice, right? Once right here, once right here. The one-fifths, those numerators, they are just treated like coefficients. And then you get the natural log of the denominator, basically. In those two, the a's were both uh, ones. And so that in the formula over here to the right, the, the a's uh, wasn't relevant. All right. This is the setup. So um, hopefully you are convinced at this point that uh, the partial fractions is useful. Like it allows you to do this integral, which you can't otherwise do. The major question for today is, how do you get those constants up there? It's not so hard to do. Um, there's sort of some, some simple tricks involved, but this is, this is the partial fraction. So how to determine those two constants, these numerators? Well, here's how. You factor the bottom of what you started with. So in this example, we'll do this particular example, and then we'll do some more. Factor the bottom, and then set it up with uh, unknowns, with variables. What I mean by that is, uh, so this one, the bottom factors as um, x minus Did I copy this down wrong? Yeah, it, sorry. There's a typo. This plus 4 here in the very beginning, it should have been a minus 4. Otherwise, those are not the proper factors. I, I, sorry about that. Did I even write that wrong last time? I may have. Sorry. Nobody noticed last time. Nobody noticed this time until I got down to business actually doing the factors. Yeah, it, it should be a minus 4. Otherwise, those uh, with a plus 4 there, actually, that, that can't be factored. So you can't do the partial fractions on that original thing. Um, minus 4. Sorry about that. Okay, now I can factor. It's x minus 4 and then x plus 1. Another math professor just walked by out there. I fixed the mistake just in time. I don't think he would have noticed, but he may have. 
Okay, uh, anyway, what I said was, factor the bottom, set it up with variables. So what we're looking for is like this. We're always going to just use A's and B's for these variables. This is how they write it in the book. We might as well. This is our goal, and so it remains to just sort of solve for A and B somehow. All right, our job is to find A and B. Can we do it? Uh, yes, we can. So on the right side there, with these variables in there, we're going to make a common denominator and add these fractions. So add these with a common denominator. Now, what will be the common denominator? Actually, the common denominator will be this thing on the left side. It will be the product of those two denominators. Right? With numbers, sometimes you try and find like the least common multiple or something, but these are going to be, th these are polynomials. The best you can do for the denominator will always be just this product. So my denominator is going to be this, x minus 4 times x plus 1. Both times, actually I'll, I'll write it two, uh, separately. So when I convert the thing with the a, I have to multiply a times x plus 1, right, to make it match the denominator. And the b, I have to multiply b times x minus 4 to make it have the appropriate denominator. All right, so when I add it all up, I get, if we distribute here, ax plus a plus bx minus 4b, right? I add it up in the numerators. The denominator is the same old thing, x minus 4 times x plus 1. All right, and this, of course, is equal, on the left side, it's, it's this. It's equal to 1 over x minus 4 times x plus 1. All right, and now it becomes a, a little more clear how to solve for the a's and the b's. Those, they have the same denominators on both sides, so we can forget about the denominators. The numerators are equal. So this says 1 equals ax plus a plus bx minus 4b, all right? And these, what we have here, this is a little strange that I have two variables, the a and the b, but I'm trying to solve for both of them in only one equation. Typically, that's not possible, right? You usually, you can't, if you have two variables, you can't solve them in the same equation. But these are not equations of numbers. These are equations of polynomials. Both sides of this equation are polynomials. So um, we can write, I will say, gather polynomial terms. You'll see what I mean by this in a moment. And equate the like coefficients. So on the left, it says 1. I'm going to write that as a polynomial. 0x plus 1. And on the right, it's a bunch of stuff, but I'm going to rearrange it. Gather the, the x parts. It will say a plus b x. Plus, and then the constant part is a minus 4b. Why is it zero? Well, because it is. I mean, the left side is 1, oh, okay. which so is... Right. I'm, I'm treating both sides as if they were polynomials. Like, the right side already is a polynomial. The left side, you might say, is just a constant. But that, of course, that counts as a polynomial, where the uh, x has a zero coefficient. All right, and now what I have is two sides here. Each is a polynomial, and we can equate the like coefficients. So the x coefficients must be equal on both sides. That means 0 equals a plus b, and then the constants must be equal on both sides. That means 1 equals a minus 4b. And this, my friends, we can solve for a and b. All right, this is a system of two equations and two variables. We can solve this for A and B. So when you say zero, that's Yeah, right. So from here, I gathered the two x terms together and then factored the x out. 
And now we're going to solve for A and B in this system. And this, I hope this is something that you learn how to do. There's a few ways you can do this. I'm basically always going to just solve one of the equations for one variable, plug that into the second equation to get the value for the other variable, and then plug back in to the first to get the, the other things. What's that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, later on in your math career, if you become a math major, um, you will take a course. We have a whole semester-long course about systems like this. In fact, there's a lot to say about them. Um, that's called uh, linear algebra. Anyway, let's do it. So from the first line, you know, there's, there's different ways to do it, and I don't care how you do it as long as you do it right. I'll solve the first one for A. It says A equals negative B. And then I plug that into the second line. So this will say 1 equals minus B minus 4B. 1 equals negative 5B. B equals minus 1 fifth, which actually we already know is correct, right? That, I remember at the very beginning, I broke it up, and, and they were 1, one fifth and negative 1 fifth. B is negative 1 fifth, and then A equals minus B. I already said that, so this means A is 1 fifth. How do you like that? This is how you find the partial fractions decomposition. All right. So my final, I mean, you could just sort of, in conclusion, what this means is that thing is equal to um, one-fifth over the first part, which I wrote as x minus 4, and then plus negative one-fifth over x plus 1. And this is the end of the partial fractions. We have determined the coefficients. So this is how you do it. You um, just refresh our memory here. You start by setting it up with variables, A and B. And then you combine the fractions by adding common denominator. You gather the terms in these polynomials, eventually set up a linear system, in this case of two variables. In two equations, and then you solve that system. And eventually, if it all works out, you get your values for A and B. Any questions about the process? We're going to do some more examples, but this is the basic, uh, basic idea. Remember, the purpose of doing this is so that you can do the integral. Although, actually, there are other settings. We're probably not going to do this in other settings in this class, but partial fractions, I know, is useful in some things in differential equations. It comes up in other places, too. It's a, uh, it's a useful trick. All right, let's just try another one. How about let's do the integral of 5x minus 16 over x squared minus 7x plus 10. All right. The bulk of the problem is doing the partial fractions thing and, and finding those coefficients. Once you've done the partial fractions, then the integral itself becomes easy to do. It's just uh, some logs, right? Um, Let's do it. So first of all, I'm going to set this up, this thing right here. I guess I'll write it again. 5x minus 16 over, uh, can we factor the bottom? What do you say? Yes, uh, x minus 5 and x minus 2, right? So this I'm going to set up as a over x minus 5 plus b over x minus 2. Add them up and equate the coefficients. So, uh, you know, once you get a feel for how these work, you will realize when you add these up, what it always amounts to is doing A times this denominator and B times this denominator, right? That's how you add the fractions up. So, and then I'm going to disregard the denominators after that step. So really, if you don't mind, you can kind of jump to this step without any problem, right? Yeah, the whole the the way the process works is you're equating the numerators on the two sides. You already know the denominators on the two sides are going to be equal. The, all the action happens in the numerators. All right. Okay, let's uh, recombine the right-hand side. You know, the left-hand side already looks like a nice polynomial. The right-hand side, if I gather the terms for the x, I get a plus b. And then the constant, I guess, is negative 2a minus 5b. 
rearrange the terms. And then this gives me my system. It says a plus b equals 5, minus 2a minus 5b equals minus 16. And we solve the system. Doing all right so far? All right, so let's solve the top one for a. It says a equals 5 minus b. And then I plug that into the second one. It says minus 2 times 5 minus b minus 5b equals negative 16. And we solve that. Distribute here. Minus 10 plus 2b minus 5b equals minus 16. Add 10 on both sides gives me 6 on the right. And add those together gives me negative 3b. I think negative 3b equals 6. Uh, negative 6? Should be negative 6. And then we divide, we get b equals 2. And we started with a equals 5 minus b, so a is 5 minus b, which is 5 minus 2, which is 3. a is 3, b is 2. Worked out nice, didn't it? That's the partial fractions trick. Uh, we're not done with the problem, but this is this is the sort of the, the hard part, I guess. Any questions about the, the process? I hope you ended up with the same numbers. All right, then, let's actually do the uh, problem as stated then. So it was this integral, 5x minus 16 over x squared minus 7x plus 10 dx. Yeah. It's very easy to mess up those uh, solving the systems, unfortunately. Maybe you can do them on your calculator, although I would expect you to. Yeah, not on the not on the test, but you can always. I mean, on the homework, do whatever you like. All right, uh, then let's uh, plug in. So the way that I had set this up was a on top of the x minus five. So the a is three. So it's three over x minus five plus. 2 over x minus 2. That's the partial fractions decomposition. And now we can just simply do the integrals. The numerators end up being like coefficients, and the denominators turn into logs. So this is natural log x minus 5 plus 2 natural log x minus 2. That's that. The integral is easy once you do the partial fractions. All right. You do need the absolute values in there. Uh, and it, it's true that there is no such thing as the log of a negative number. This is actually why you need the absolute values. Um, with the absolute values, you can plug anything into, uh, in anything into x because it automatically becomes positive before you take the log. If you put parentheses, then many values of x would be off limits for that function. Actually, the, the, there's one value you can't plug in. There's no such thing as log of 0, so you can't plug in um, x equals 5 to that first one. But anything else you can. That's, that's the purpose of the absolute value signs. Yeah, right. It's a, the, the graph of natural log looks like that. Right. Uh, and the graph of ln absolute value x gives you the other side too, but it still has a yeah, it still has a vertical asymptote at zero. Mm hmm All right, excellent. Um, great. So this partial fractions trick. Let me just say this works when we have a rational function. Rational function, remember, I left the word out, two words. When we have a rational function, that means a fraction of polynomials, right? Something like p of x divided by q of x. This will work when we have a rational function where the degree of the bottom, the denominator, is greater, uh, yeah, greater than the degree of the numerator. Uh, 
Sorry, I thought I was going to sneeze, but I didn't. The degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator. If you try partial fractions when the numerator degree is too high, um, you will see it will be impossible to make it work. For example, like in here, if somehow this numerator here had an x squared in it, then you could still set up the right-hand side. You could still do this, but there's actually, there's no way to get an x squared on the right side of this. Um, and so it, would not, it wouldn't be possible, like no values of a and b would ever add together to give you an x squared over here because they're not set up to give you any x squareds. So this trick works only when, this is why I said, the degree of the denominator has to be greater than the degree of the numerator. If the numerator has some, uh, some terms of too high degree, then you won't be able to do the partial fractions. Um, there is another trick you can use in conjunction with the partial fractions, though, which allows you to circumvent this issue. So if the numerator has degree um, greater or equal to denominator, We do sort of a preliminary trick. First, do something that I hope that you've seen this before, although you can learn about it right now if you haven't. Something called polynomial long division. You into that? For some reason, I really like the polynomial long division. I don't, I don't know why. Um, there's some things that I like. Sometimes there's something called synthetic division, which is really the same. I mean, it looks different when you write it down, but it, it accomplishes the same uh, goal as polynomial long division. And actually, I don't know how to do synthetic division. OK. It's the same process. It's just uh, written in a, in my opinion, strange way. because. Well, it's only strange because I, I do it the other way. So, um, First, do polynomial long division. So maybe you've seen this before. I hope that you have, but if not, that's fine. Let's, we're going to try some examples. So for example, how about let's do the integral 2x cubed plus x squared minus 23x plus 16 divided by x squared plus x minus 12 dx, all right? So the fact that it's a rational function, polynomial divided by polynomial, you should immediately expect that you're going to use partial fractions here. But the numerator, its degree is too high. The partial fractions only works if the denominator degree is greater, strictly greater. Even if they're equal, uh, the partial fraction is not going to work. So. Before we do that, we divide. So I want to divide x squared, uh, the top divided by the bottom, right? And we're going to do this using long division. I will, I will write this down with this thing. 2x cubed plus x squared minus 23x plus 16, all right? This is the long division. Maybe just to refresh our memory, do you remember how to do ordinary, like, long division of numbers? Can we just try one like that? How about, um, uh, I'll just make up, say, 5, 1, 7, 2, 4, 3. 17,243 divided by 5. What you know about long division? Here, here's, here's what I know about long division. You start off by trying to divide 5 into 1, but 5 doesn't go into 1. So maybe I'll start with 17, right? You go 17 divided by 5 is 3. So I put the 3 up here. Of course, not exactly 3. It's 3 with, with some leftover stuff. But you try your best, right? Price is right rules. You can't go over, but you want to go as close as you can without, without going over. And then the next step is you multiply the 3 times the 5, and you write it under the 17, which is 15. And then you subtract. You get 2. And 2 is the remainder from that step. 
the remainder uh, when you divide 17 by 5. And then I bring down the next digit like that, and we do the whole process again. So now I divide 5 into 22. I get 4. I put 20. I subtract. I get 2. I drop down the 4. 5 into 24. Again, I get 4. I get 20 here. Pull down the 4. Bring the 3 down. 43 divided by 5 will be 8. Gives me 40. I subtract, and I get 3. And that 3 is the remainder. And so my final answer, you know, when I did this, like, in, in fourth grade or whatever, my teacher said, write your answer, like, 3, 4, 4, 8, R3. The only time in your entire life when you, when you get an answer with the letter R in it. Uh, really, I mean, this is, this is a strange notation that's used only by fourth graders when they're doing their long division homework. The true answer to this is that 17, 2, 43 divided by 5, it equals... 3, 4, 4, 8, plus 3 fifths. That's the extra, the remainder part. This is how you write the answer in ordinary context other than fourth grade. Did you say that zero? Oh, uh, yeah. If you want to com compute more decimal digits, you can, yes, you can do that. Yeah. But actually, uh, I wanted to write this out because. In the polynomial long division, you you basically don't ever try to do more more digits in that in that same way. You just end up with some remainder. I just want to make sure everybody's clear on the process and writing the remainder as a little how you write this answer. It's the total answer you got at the top of the division problem, and then plus the remainder part as a fraction. Okay, let's try the same thing for these polynomials. All right. Now, the idea is we're going to do the same thing, but we treat sort of each term of the polynomial as its own digit. So I begin by looking at this, 2x cubed, and I try to divide it by this. And really, I'm only going to look at the leading digits here. The rest will just kind of affect the remainders. But you ask yourself, what do I have to multiply x squared by to make 2x cubed? And the answer is, 2x, you can think of this as dividing if you want. What's 2x cubed divided by x squared? It is 2x. But, or another way to, to think about it is, what do I need to multiply x squared by to make 2x cubed? And the answer is, I need to multiply it by 2x. All right? That's the first step of the division. I remember my fourth grade teacher had a little song and dance about the steps of long division. Um... I don't remember what the steps were. There was something like, you divide it once, and then you multiply. You multiply the 2x times the, uh, the thing out on the left. So I'm going to multiply 2x times this thing, the thing I'm dividing by, and write that right under it, just like I do in the long division. It becomes 2x cubed plus 2x squared minus 24x. So what I did in that step was multiply 2x times the thing we're dividing by. And then we subtract, just like in ordinary long division. Subtract. 2x cubed minus 2x cubed, they, they cancel. That's like a 0x cubed. Plus x squared minus 2x squared, I guess is negative x squared. And then negative 23x minus 24x is plus x. All right. I probably shouldn't have written this 0x cubed. But just forget about that, right? You don't, you don't need to think about that anymore. All right, that's the subtracting step. And now we repeat the process. So I now am going to divide this into here. How did you, get, how'd you go from 23 to 24? Yeah, the, this, so this line right here, thanks for the question from the folks back home. This line comes from multiplying this by uh, this 2x. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's, that it's 12 times 2 is 24. That's why that happened. It's the same as when you when you are uh, long dividing numbers. Where this number comes from is is multiplying these guys. Okay, next I am going to divide the next term. So I look at minus x squared and I ask, what do I have to multiply this by to make minus x squared? And the answer is negative one. I hope that's what you said it was going to be. 
And then I multiply. So multiplying this thing over here on the left by negative 1 and write it down here, I get negative x squared minus x plus 12. Oh, I forgot one of the steps in the in the song and dance. Just bring down the next digit. I never did that. You gotta bring this guy down, right? When you're doing the long division, you gotta bring down the next digit. Sorry about that. I gotta go back to fourth grade. And then we subtract. Okay, minus x squared minus x squared will go away. X minus negative x gives me a two x, and then sixteen minus twelve is plus four. All right. And now we stop. How do you know that we should stop here? It's because this, uh, well, I mean, it's because we have no more digits to drop down here. That means we're done. And this leftover thing down here is the remainder. All right. We got to the end of the polynomial. There is no more term to drop down for the next step. And so this term is the remainder. So we're done with the long division. And to write the conclusion, it says 2x cubed plus x squared minus 23x plus 16 divided by x squared plus x minus 12. It equals, I'm going to try and write this just the way that I did before with the 5 and all of that, right? First of all, the answer is 2x minus 1 plus the remainder part is 2x plus 4 over x squared plus x minus 12. And this is the end of the long division. You write the quotient, the thing up top, all by itself, and then plus the remainder part is, uh, is part of a fraction. Now, if you're lucky, the thing divides in with no remainder, and then you have no fraction part left over. But uh, that's kind of too, too good to hope for, usually. All right. Yes. So remember, this problem was originally about doing the integral of this thing. Would you mind if I just write these integral signs in? dx, right? Is the right-hand side any easier to do for the integral? It is. It's not easy yet. But this, I will say, we can now do partial fractions. Because now the denominator is a greater degree. And that was the, the whole point of this division was to make it so that the denominator now has greater degree. Remember, the reason that we did the partial fractions, or the reason we did the division, is because we began with something where the degree on top was bigger. After, do, uh, after dividing, you will always uh, get something where the degree on the bottom is bigger. Now we can do partial fractions. All right, let's do it. This will take you a while to do one of these problems, right? You've got to do the whole division thing and then do the whole partial fractions thing. It's a, it's a, little, uh, a little taxing. Okay, anyway, what's it going to be? So I go 2x plus 4 over x squared plus x minus 12. I try to write this as my partial fractions. What are the denominators going to be? Yeah, 3 and 4 somehow? Not. Surely you don't mean the denominators actually are 3 and 4. No, Yeah, x, huh? x plus, let's do it this way, x plus 4 and x minus 3. You can write it whatever order you want, although it'll, it'll change the steps that you write if you have it the other way around. All right, do the partial fractions. It says 2x plus 4. And on the right side, we multiply to get common denominators. It's going to be a times x minus 3 and b times x plus 4, right? This is how the uh, numerators will end up looking after making that common denominator. And then we rearrange things and equate the appropriate terms. So it says 2x plus 4 on the left. On the right, I get a plus bx minus 3a minus 4b, right?
And so when I equate the terms, I get a plus b equals 2, and minus 3a minus 4b equals 4. And now we got to solve the system. So this, um, I'll solve the top one for a like I usually do. a equals 2 minus b. And then the bottom one becomes negative 3 times 2 minus b minus 4b equals 4. Distribute and recombine, etc. Negative 6 plus 3b minus 4b equals 4. Add the 6 and subtract negative b equals 10 no something went wrong did something go wrong yeah sorry I I messed this up for some reason sorry about this I'm going too fast for myself I wrote minus 4b here it should be plus 4 I don't know why I did that right this distributes the b here plus 4b sorry about that that makes a plus 4b here, a plus 4b here, and here. So instead of negative b equals 10, it's 7b equals 10, which is, which is worse in my opinion. I don't like 7s uh, when I'm trying to solve for things. So b is 10 over 7, which I don't really like, but that's what my paper says too, so it must be right. right? And then um, a is 2 minus b. So this is 2 minus 10 over 7, 2 being 14 over 7. 2 minus 10 over 7 is 4 over 7. That's A. So these are my results from the partial fractions. Sorry about that typo. That infraction, if you will, partial infraction. <laughs> All right. Let's see if we can put this all together. We're almost done with this integral now. So that means our original integral was this, right? Uh, but then I did the partial fractions on that thing. So what I end up with is the integral. I hope you can see all this on your page at the same time. 2x minus 1 plus, and then I had the remainder part, but I just broke that up into the partial fractions where the a was 4 over 7. So it's 4 over 7, x plus 4 plus. Uh, the b, 10 over 7, x minus 3. This is my integral. And now we can do the integral. The first two parts are very easy. You know, 2x becomes x squared. Minus 1 becomes minus x. And then these fraction parts, they, they each become natural logs. So it's going to be 4 over 7, ln, absolute value. 4 plus 10 over 7 ln absolute value x minus 3. That's your answer. It's quite a journey to get there. There's some satisfaction in uh, finishing it off. As always, if you, could, if you want to, you could check your answer here by taking the derivative of this final answer that we got and verifying that it equals what we started with. Now, it would not be obvious that it equals what we started with. If you take the derivative of all this, you would end up, well, you would get this uh, immediately, right? But then um, to verify that that equals what we started with, you would actually have to add these all together with common denominators. And uh, if you did it right, you would get what we started with if, if we did all the rest of it right, all right? Anybody got any questions about this? I got one more to do, and then I had some for you all to try, although I don't know if we're going to have enough time for that, but we can start off next time with that. Uh, let's try one more, which requires a division. This one's uh, maybe a little quicker than the previous one. I don't know. 3x squared plus 18 divided by x squared minus 5x plus 6 dx. Let's do it. Let's go, as they say on the YouTubes. So, 
Yeah, I'm pushing 1,600. What do you, what's your content? Uh, my content is, um, is of minimal interest to almost everybody. But um, you'll see. If, um, yeah, no, I have some, I have some fans. I have a, a, an ongoing YouTube series I post about once a month um, about antique mathematical computing devices. Yeah, they're calculators. I'm not really into cal uh, typewriters, but I mean, mechanically, they're kind of similar. They look like typewriters. Yeah. Check them out. Like and subscribe. I, re I recently hit the monetization threshold. So, yeah, I make over $1 per day. No, under $1, under $1 per day. It's like $20, to $20 a month or so. Just something. I guess, yeah. I also have a real job, which pays better than that, <laughs> thankfully. Um, yeah. Please like and subscribe. Okay. Let's do it. So, first of all, you look at this. It looks like a fraction of polynomials, so uh, you're going to do partial fractions eventually, but the degree is equal on the top and the bottom. This is too much. Remember, to do partial fractions, the degree on top must be less. So you got to start by dividing. So we're going to divide first. Remember the way you write this, the thing you're dividing by goes out there, the denominator, and then the numerator goes on the inside. Now, the numerator is missing the x term, but your division is going to look all crazy if you don't leave a space for it, right? So I write 0x in there because I'm going to need to uh, account for that, uh, that, that digit, so to speak. It's not really a digit, but it plays the role of a digit. Okay, anyway, um, what do you say? Anybody want to tell me what should I put up here for my, for my first uh, quotient? Just 3. Yeah, you've got to ask yourself... I'm doing 3x squared dividing by x squared, and it's just 3. All right. So then we multiply. We get 3x squared multiplying this whole thing out here by 3. 3x squared minus 15x plus 18. We subtract. The 3x squareds cancel. 0x minus 15x gives me 15x, and the 18s also cancel. All right. And this is actually the end of the division. This was kind of an easy one, although somewhat weird looking. This is the end of the division because there is no next term to drop down, right? There's nothing over here that, that we can pull down to get the next uh, step in the division. So that's it, all right? So my, my quotient then equals, so my I'll, I'll just write the original integral again. It equals 3... Uh, inside the integral, 3, and then plus the remainder, and the remainder is 15x over the original denominator. So we just had to do long division one step, and now we get something which is appropriate for the partial fractions, because the numerator degree is now less than the denominator degree. All right? Actually, you can kind of predict how many terms of the long division you're going to have to do. Each term you do of the long division will reduce the numerator degree by one. And so in this case, we only have to do it once. In the previous example, we have to do it two or three times. All right. Let's do the partial fractions then. So I'm going to write this as 3 plus, okay, instead of that, I want A's and B's. Factor the bottom. Uh, I think it's going to be x minus 2 and x minus 3. Uh, if you want plus 6 here, then these guys have to have the same sign. And they should add up to 5.
Yeah, right. To get negative 5, you could do minus 6 and plus 1, but then they wouldn't give you a... Yeah. All right. And now I do the partial fraction. So, setting this up, I want 15x to equal... 15x has to equal a times x minus 3 plus b times x minus 2, right? The numerators are going to be a x minus 3 plus b times x minus 2, and what it has to add up to is 15x to make the numerator uh, correct. And then we do the usual thing. So on the left side, I have 15x. On the right side, uh, when I gather the x's, I get a plus b times x. Because of this, the way that this always works, you're basically always going to get a plus b in front of the x, um, unless your uh, denominators, well, unless your denominators have extra coefficients in front of the x, which they typically won't. It can happen, but not in our examples. And then minus three a minus two b, all right. So my system says the x powers on both sides, fifteen equals a plus b. And the constants on both sides, what do you use for the constant on the left? You would equate this minus 3a minus 2b equals the constant on the left. What do you say? Uh, you don't want x. It better be a number, or else you're not going to be able to, like this, to solve this system. You need a number right there. What do you think? Yeah, 0. You might as well use 0, right? This 15x, you interpret as 15x plus the constant 0. Even though the constant was left out, it's a 0. Right? Just like if the x is missing on the left, you, you make it a 0x. If the constant is missing, you make it a 0. Okay, what do we got here then? So this is going to say um, A equals 15 minus B. The second one plugging in, I get 0 equals negative 3 times 15 minus B minus 2B. This says 0 equals minus 45 minus 3B minus 2B. I, I failed to distribute the minus sign. It should be plus 3b there. Sorry about that. Uh, if I add the 45, 45 equals b, isn't it? That's the biggest number we've seen all day. b is 45. Uh, and then what is the a? a is 15 minus b. 15 minus 45 is negative 30. All right, those are the partial fractions coefficients. So my original integral becomes integral 3 plus negative 30 over x minus 2 plus 45 over x minus 3 dx. There you go. All the hard work is done. Now we just write the answer by integrating. So the 3 becomes a 3x. The next guy becomes negative 30, natural log, absolute value, x minus 2. And then the next guy becomes 45, natural log, absolute value, x minus 3. There you go. Yeah, right. I would not give you more than one of these on the test. And I might give you zero of them on the quiz. I don't know. I, it would have to be. This one even was kind of simple because you only have to do one step of the long division. But it's still, uh, it's going to take you a while to do it. It's the whole page. Yeah. All right. We got 12 minutes. I think that's enough time for you guys to try one. Let's try. I don't know if this is enough time. We'll see what we can do. This one requires a long division followed by a partial fractions. All right, see what you think.
I will do it myself slowly. Sure. Well, I'm going to walk around eventually. Folks back home doing all right? I hope so. Sorry, I can't look at your paper.
I hope everybody got the same quotient as I did for the long division. It's easy to mess those up. All right, it's almost time to go. Let's chat about these. I don't know if you quite finished them. This will take you a while to do. And there's many chances to mess it up. And unfortunately, if you mess it up at the beginning, it's going to screw the whole rest of the thing. Um, but, you know, when I'm grading these, I'm going to look for you know what you're doing. Not, not, I won't take off too many points if you mess it up. Um, so when I did, I began with the long division. And everybody in here, at least, um, eventually came up with the same... Uh, quotient and remainder as I got. Uh, and then the remainder part, you do the partial fraction, so I break it up like that. The denominators are x plus 3, x minus 1. Do a bunch of multiplying, I end up with this system here, which I hope is uh, what, what everybody else got. And then I solved the system. Actually, I happen to notice in this one, if you add the two equations, the a's will cancel. Little, little pro uh, trick it gives me 10 equals 4b, and uh, that means b is 10 over 4. And then a plus b is 9. All right. And so a plus 10 over 4 equals 9, which means a is um, 9 minus 10 over 4. Uh, 9 in fourths is uh, 36, right? So 36 minus 10, this is 26 over 4. Is that what everybody else got? I hope so. Unfortunately, it's hard. You know, usually I try to make the, uh, make the numbers turn out nice, but there's like two levels of nonsense in a problem like this, which makes it hard to, to cook up this number to be nice. Makes means you have to reverse engineer the whole system and then also the long division, which is sometimes more trouble than it's worth. For me. Anyway, these are the A's and the B's. Yeah, somebody got a question? Uh, how, did you get, uh, how did you get to B equals 10 over 4? Uh, this was, so I did a little trick here, which was adding the two equations together to cancel the A's. And then it said 10 equals 4B. Uh, and then I divide by 4 here. B equals 10 over 4. Or you can do this in the, in the way that I would usually do it, which is like solve the first one for A and then plug that into the second one. All right. Anyway, these are my A's and B's. Let's just write the final answer then. So it, it was integral of, I forgot the rest of it, x squared plus 2x and then plus a over x plus 3. So that's 26 over 4 over x plus 3 plus uh, 10 over 4 over x minus 1. And this, we do the integrals. We get 1 third x cubed plus x squared plus 26 over 4, natural log, x plus 3, plus 10 over 4, natural log, 
x minus 1. So let's see. All right. That's that. And I think that'll do it. Actually, this is, this is all we needed to say about partial fractions. So I'm glad that we got to that example there. All right. Next time around, we will start talking about something completely different. Have a good weekend, everybody. Thank you. Have a nice weekend. What's that? Uh, I usually do them sometime over the weekend. So, yeah. Yeah.